Okay, brilliant. Um, I've just got some large bits of card here. Um, I mentioned, you know, either card or cereal packaging. Um, I've just got paints, brushes, sponges, um, painting squirty bottles, <laughs> um, and then just anything that you can use to make a mark, really. So I've got things like nail brushes, sponges, bath sponges, <laughs> just anything that um, you can just make marks with, really. Um, okay. I'm in my second year at Leeds Beckett and I'm doing a lot of performance work, so live interactive workshops, um, working with objects, working with like time and space and um, mainly using my body within those as well. So it, it is, it's a bit of a weird one, you either understand it or you don't, but it's quite intriguing for everyone watching. So. I yeah, I hope you enjoy. <laughs> um, I'm just going to start now. So it would be quite nice if you just kind of like make along really. We can just have a bit of a chat about, you know, our courses or whatever. Um, so these are a few bits that I've done um, with some community workshops that I'm part of. Um, we do, someone else coming in. Um, yeah, we do a lot of um, fun workshops. Um, I do a lot of them online as well. Um, so yeah, so it's quite an interactive space. Um, feel free to ask me any questions either in the chat or just, you know, turn your cameras on and, you know, ask me them. But I think we'll get started. Um, for anyone else that's just joined as well, um, we're just going to kind of get making with a few objects and materials and just, you know, see what, see what we can do. That's okay. Um, I've got a lot of different colours here, so I'm just going to start by getting all those out. What kind of objects should I get? Um, I mean, I mainly at the moment be using like kitchen utensils, you know, like wooden spoons or, um, you know, brushes, that kind of stuff. Um, I've got some large bits of card as well, but when I'm in the studio, I normally use kind of large bits of um, fabric. Um, and big rolls of paper as well. Um, but honestly, anything that you can find. Um, if not, then you could literally just use some brushes and just make, you know, a few different marks or maybe use wax crayons or something. Okay, I'm going to go get those stuff right now. Right. So this event obviously there's only a small number of us, um, slightly more than <laughs> um, we had last week. Um, but it's an interactive performance kind of event. It's a little workshop and the aim is we're all kind of making together. So we'll just use a few objects, a few paints, and we'll just, you know, create some marks on the surface. And it's helpful for me as well, because this is part of my uni project. Um, but as well, we, it, it's just a nice social space. Now, this meeting is being recorded, so if you've got anything to ask me, either message in the chat, I'll just get low enough, just message in the chat, or just turn your camera on, or just turn your audio on, and just ask me whatever you like. But mark making is quite abstract, and um, in a way, like a record or, or a trace of an event. So say, for instance, we're making marks now, and it's quite interactive, you know, it's live, you know, you can see what I'm doing. Once I've done that, the action of making that mark is technically in the past, but the mark on the page kind of acts as a trace or a record or documentation, if you like, of that happening. Um, I do a lot of large scale kind of works as well. I know Alan Freitz here, she'll know from last year. Um, I do a lot of things, you know, charcoal, paints, you know, using my body as physical involvement within that. Um, using different objects. That's kind of a new development this year. Um, but yeah, just using different objects, different materials in time and space. And I usually document through film. So, you know, I set up, you know, it's like more like a DIY project and I set up, um, you know, cameras um, to get photographs or film of myself doing these actions. And I like to think of it more as improvised choreography, if you like, or quite spontaneous kind of movements. Um, but yeah, so we'll just kind of get creating and 
and see what happens, really. Uh, I'm going to start with using my sponges, I think. Um, but I do like, you know, quite abstract kind of things. So like I was showing before, I'll hold up again. These are a few bits that I made in some community art workshops um, over the summer. Um, I was kind of encouraging people to express themselves through colour, express themselves through, you know, the actions that they're using, you know, the ways that they're applying that medium to the paper. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, just kind of using different objects. So, um, the good thing is everyone will have slightly different things, you know, maybe these objects mean something, maybe they're totally random, you know. So again, if there's a, I don't know, a deeper, me like a meaning behind the objects that you're using, then feel free to let us know as well. So. The good thing about this is we're going to all make totally different things. So it's quite a free kind of open workshop, if you like. Did you manage to get some materials and everything? Yeah, I've got paper and I looked in the recycling bin and I've got this nice white cardboard. Oh, brilliant. Thick cardboard. During lockdown, I was using a lot of cereal packaging um, as a way to kind of make sure everyone had that kind of material. And I feel like it represents, you know, the idea of using a domestic space, especially during lockdown. So the idea of artists working from home, kind of the idea of personal and work life merging together. Um, so that was quite nice. I've got a question. Could you do this activity on different surfaces? Would I do it on glass? Oh, that's a good question. I've, I've never thought about that, but any surface, as far as I'm concerned, you can create marks on. Um, transparent materials, maybe um, large plastic sheeting might be quite nice. Um, and then you can play around with the idea of you know, space and light. So again, yeah. Thank you very much. That's a good question. So what are we uh, starting to do? What, how, what are we starting with? What are uh, we doing? To start with any kind of materials that you've got, any objects. Um, I, I'm using mainly paint for mine. So we're just going to start by making a few different marks on the surface and hopefully create a few different pieces, if that's okay. Yeah. Um, so we're just applying paint like yeah. not really thinking what shapes um, if you like I mean, what's the first step normally i don't think about what i'm making in terms of like a picture it's normally just a collection of marks on the surface but at the same time you don't have to be as abstract as that you can maybe make something with those objects maybe you know try to draw a face with a large brush how and then kind of like see how that would work for you so it depends on if you want them to be totally improvised or you want them to control it to an extent in terms of you know you know what you're going to create but you don't know how it's going to look depending on what objects you're using if that makes sense yeah yeah household objects um you could use kitchen utensils uh, i mentioned before like spatulas um wooden spoons maybe a dustpan and brush um different bath objects um i mean one of my performance pieces that I've done, um, can I use my sister? <laughs> um, <laughs> the other thing that um, I did uh, the last time I was in the studio, I was actually creating more like a, a gest gesture kind of piece, you know, drawing, but using my feet as the paintbrush. I was kind of putting the charcoal in between my toes and holding it there and trying to draw something, but drawing with, my feet in the charcoal. So yeah, um, if you want to use half priest's feet, then yeah, go ahead. <laughs> the good thing about using different objects as well is they all come out different. So there's different textures that you kind of begin to see as you start creating, which is quite nice. Also, the sounds of when you're applying um, the material, the paint, is quite interesting as well. I mean, you could try using pigment or inks. Um... I'm doing a lot of things with space as well, so the idea of working in um, 
working in kind of different um different spaces so whether it's I don't know the bathroom I mean one week I did a hair painting using my hair as the paintbrush as like a creative tool um or yeah you could use any spaces you could use the outdoors you could use you know literally like the environment and the materials that you find within that so again for me it's very much about the location as well as the objects and kind of how my body responds to those through movement. How are you getting on? Are you okay? Or? Yeah, I'm just picking a colour. Thank you for the questions, Alan, for you. Keep them coming. <laughs> Now, I know this week a lot of my group have presentations, so that's why a lot of people on my course couldn't really make it. They've all got deadlines this week. <laughs> so. One thing that's quite cool is if you apply kind of paint to um, the surface, you can then move it around and kind of using that force of gravity to kind of pull it like pull the material down the piece, which is quite nice. I like working large scale, so using, you know, big pieces of material really, but the largest piece I could find was A1, so. <laughs> is painting your thing then? What have you found, like discovered with yourself through uni that you like to do? Like, what's the main thing or mean things um i mean i was doing a lot of performance type work last year um but using different materials um i think what's quite interesting about my work is i mean i know for myself i begin to kind of question you know is it um a drawing am i drawing with the materials is it a painting is it a performance is it all three in what order um, and the idea of who is performing is it myself instructing the objects or am I performing kind of in tune with them um, I was looking a lot last year at kind of music styles and ways that I can inform how the piece is kind of created um, I think it's quite a diverse topic as well so it's like um, I don't think there's necessarily a right and wrong answer and there's different ways to like different um, kind of pathways to kind of take it which is quite good where do you see this project developing oh that's a good question um, I mean I do have a live event coming up uh, after Christmas so the start of February when I'm back in the studio um, for me, it's mainly been about kind of trying to include some sort of audience. And that's been like the next stage really for me. Um, it'd be quite nice to do something in a physical space and it'd be more of a kind of viewing, if you like. Um, but obviously with COVID, you know, it hasn't been possible yet. Um, but yeah, I'd like to take it more in, you know, the audience kind of, participation kind of interactive audience kind of um way for me you could like stand in front of people and have a big canvas of something and um like somehow at the end of it people have like added and you've created a picture based on wow. what like yeah. yeah what people have like suggested and through however you want to do it like i can imagine you you're doing that like it, at the end there's a piece that everyone's created and like added a, input like a piece in a way like a yeah
um, a piece in February is titled Gender and Performance. So it's kind of um, looking at you know, masculine and feminine associations with movement and um, kind of the, how, the way we move. So two artists that I've been looking at are Heather Hansen and Jackson Pollock. So Heather Hansen does these nice, you know, beautiful kind of choreographed, synchronized pieces using charcoal, they look really dainty. And then Jackson Pollock, obviously he does, you know, giant, you know, canvases, you know, abstract, elaborate movements on the floor. So again, challenging the idea of gender roles within performance and within like the making of art but also kind of challenging the way we make art in terms of, you know, the traditional norm of making art versus this new contemporary kind of um, pathway that I feel like I'm going down. Um, so, yeah. I feel like this project has developed so much since last year. I keep getting different um, kinds of ideas from different people, different suggestions. Um, someone told me once to kind of focus on the audio, the audio of um, the pieces. So, you know, the different sounds that the objects make. Um, and then the idea of having like a kind of like a live performance versus um, a pre-recorded one, so the idea that if it's a pre-recorded one, the performance, the real life performance is in the past, and to what extent does that matter? So again, I've, I keep bumping into all these kind of questions that um, I'm just kind of continuously asking myself, and then that is then developing and changing my work in some way. What I'll do after, because I don't think you came to my pre-recorded one last week, I'll screen share and I'll show you like two or three of my films as well that I've done from this year. Yeah. Yeah, it's more the action or the process rather than like the final piece that I'm making. But even though colour doesn't seem that apparent in the way that I talk about my work, it's still for me quite a big, you know, visual factor. Um, yeah. I do like a bit of colour and movement, you know, it's quite energetic and fun. <laughs> Hi, can you hear me? Hey, yeah. yeah. I just wanted to ask, do you, talking about the masculinity and femininity, which do you think your work resonates with? Would you say your work is masculine or feminine or a mix? Or is certain mark making more masculine or feminine? That's a good question. Um, Thank I, you, Holly. <laughs> I feel like there is a bit of a mix in terms of um, you know, the feminine and masculine associations with the movements that I've made yeah. in previous films. Um, if I had to pick one based on the majority in terms of like, you know, all the collection of work that I've made, I would actually say masculine. I mean, I don't necessarily oh. plan the movements. They're very improvised, they're very spontaneous. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, no, I, I would say masculine. They're, they're very elaborate. Um, I mean, you'll probably know a lot from my work last year as well. Yeah. Um, yeah you very... proper go for it, don't you? Oh, oh yeah, I just go for it. <laughs> um, but no, they're very elaborate. So in terms, just based on that solely, I would say, um, I would say more masculine, actually. Um, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for the question. <laughs> it's all right, Ruth. <laughs> it's all right, Ruth. <laughs>
got things like um, toothbrushes and old makeup brushes here as well. So I'm going to use those for my next piece. I've also got some coloured charcoal and some wax crayons here as well. So. I always find out that I, I don't pour enough paint and I always run out very quickly. Kind of like the idea of you know giving objects kind of a new language or kind of repurposing them so you know you normally think that you know a wooden spoon would be used you know in the kitchen and um, you wouldn't necessarily think that it would be a creative tool to make art with and you know do some marks and create an abstract piece with so i tend to kind of collect a bunch of objects that don't necessarily have a meaning to myself but i just know that they will create some really you know cool visual you know marks on the page but then as i'm doing that i genuinely try to include the objects in the way that i talk about the work so obviously they have a domestic kind of association with you know the home and um, personal life and um, and the idea of you know artists having to you know work at home during lockdown so i feel like they kind of represent the domestic space quite well um one artist you might have heard of her, Martha Rosler. Um, she's an art, a feminist artist that I've been looking at, and she kind of creates these um, sets where she's kind of challenging the idea of you know women, you know the views of women should be in the kitchen and all that. And she would go through the alphabet and matching it with each object or each kitchen object related to the domestic setting. And she would apply marks to the page um, quite, you know, vigorously to challenge the idea that, um, you know, it's not just a women, woman's job to be in the kitchen and that, and that kind of stuff. So that is kind of where I took my inspiration from to include objects in my work. So this is only a very recent thing. <laughs> Oh, thank you very much for the questions, Alan Free. I've just seen them in the chat. <laughs> I'm kind of like the patterns and, you know, the lines that you can make with these objects as well. So you can either be totally improvised and kind of applying the paint using the objects to the page. Or you can think, right, I want to draw a line or I want to draw something with this object. So you've kind of got an idea in your head of what you want to make. Um, that was something that was actually brought up last um, week by 
um, Charlotte Brofel from my course. Um, so, yeah. I mean, I'm, at the moment I'm using, you know, a makeup brush and it feels, you know, like it, it kind of challenges the idea of, you know, perfection and imperfection because, you know, you'd expect, you know, a makeup brush to be used to, you know, apply makeup, you know, very daintily. However, I'm using it to create these, you know, quite large elaborate marks. So again, just challenging the idea of making art, the way we produce art, and I guess the use or the purpose of these objects that we're using. What objects did you manage to find, Sutton? Did you find any? Uh, yes, so I uh, used um, toilet paper, the cardboard roll, yeah, yeah. and I like squished it and I loaded up making oh, this. Oh, that's really good. And I got, and I found um, uh, from a juice carton, the lid. So at the top, you can see those, those little lines, mm, like yeah. a row of them and at the bottom. Very nice. So, yeah. Oh, like the pattern that's created, you know, um, the white space um, in between the different marks that you've made. Very good. Yeah. And now I found this old like Halloween flashing finger. Oh, um rubber oh, finger. Yeah. Oh right. and a Lego piece. And a Lego piece. I normally just get anything that I think will make, you know, some cool textures and that kind of stuff. Yeah. What level did you say you were in, sorry? I'm in the first year. In the first year. Are you enjoying it? Um, not really because um, everything has changed, like every single thing. So it's really not enjoyable, but I'm glad that I'm doing uni work. It doesn't feel like it yet because it, we've just, we're, just, we're just doing like introduction stuff briefs that don't really um don't have any depth to them just waiting for the time to pass to oh. so that i can have a uni experience like you have had without any changes yeah definitely yeah i mean it was a lot better last year because we were in the studio you know all the time it felt like we had you know the max time that we could possibly have but obviously now everything's you know a mix of online and then in the studio it just feels very different i always find art quite therapeutic as well so it's one of yeah, the things very. that you know you can kind of lose yourself in and you're not too focused on you know um kind of what you're doing to an extent you can you, just, you can just spend hours on it if you like you know i expect yeah illustration it's quite time consuming then for you is it maybe yeah it can be yeah
any I'll put in the chat my Instagram because any pieces that you make, would you be able to send me maybe some photographs over onto there? How has your work changed due to COVID? Um it hasn't really changed in terms of how I see art, but more how I've produced it, I guess. Um Due to COVID, I feel like I've grown more of an attachment as well to showing my work, not just in a physical space, but more, you know, doing things like this, you know, using technology as another space to show and present work. Um, it's also changed in terms of, you know, repurposing different rooms in my house and, you know, creating pieces, for instance, in either the kitchen or the bathroom or the living room. Um, so I feel like I've made more use of space because in a way I've been forced to kind of think about other ways of showing my work. Um, so yeah, I definitely think the main, the main way my work has changed due to COVID has been in terms of how I present my work and the areas in which I produce the work. Um, but yeah, I've put my Instagram in the chat just now. So any pieces that you've got, uh, please take some photos and send them to me. That'd be much of I can't send you on Instagram because oh. um, uh, I can't get into my account. Like oh. forget password doesn't work and everything. So I've just gave up and left it. So if there's a way to send it you on here, I can do that. You can either send it on here. Or I've put my email address just in now. Okay. So, right, I'm gonna um, screen share because I've got, it says here that something about remaining meeting time being like six minutes. So I'm gonna screen share and I'll show you one of the films that I've done. Um, and then if anyone has any last minute questions, please put them in the chat. And then I'll show you the pieces that I've made in a minute. Right. Um, All right, can you all see my screen? You should be able to see it, I think. Yeah. Yeah. When did you make this? These are all pieces that I've made from um, September onwards. So this is the piece that um, I used Heather Hansen as inspiration for. Um, I'll just play it. Why are you wearing a mask? Um, I was wearing... Can you hear me, sorry? Pardon? Oh, those are the people there.
Yeah, okay. Um, would I ever do a performance in Leeds? Um, I was thinking about maybe doing something using the outdoor space. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, I would think about you know using the outdoor space to kind of create work. That would be quite a nice idea. Um. Right, I'm going to just hold up the pieces that I've made. So this is the one that I've just done here, kind of using different colours, different tools to kind of make art with. And I've got another one here, which is still drying, but slightly more brighter. Again, using a lot of different colours and using those implements or objects to kind of create marks on the surface. And then here is my other one as well. I quite like the pastely kind of colours that I've used on this one. Um, but yeah, if you've got any work, then please send it to my email if that's okay. Um, it would be great for me to kind of have a look at what you've made. Maybe, I don't know, put at the bottom, you know, what you've used, just to kind of remind me. Um, I say there's like less than a minute on the meeting, so 